Full Eucharist Rite II begins on page 355. Tonight we celebrate the Feast of St. Stephen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, our heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord of glory, for the example of the first martyr, Stephen who looked up to heaven and prayed for his persecutors to your Son, Jesus Christ, who stands at your right hand, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. At the beginning of the reign of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. Speak to them all the words that I command you. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, all of them, and they will turn from their evil way, that I may change my mind about the disaster that I intend to bring on them because of their evil doings. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to heed the words of my servants, the prophets who I send to you urgently, though you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Silon, Silo, and I will make this city a curse for the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And then Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people. Then the priests and the prophets and all the people lay hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Silo, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, it is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will change his mind about the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. 
Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Here ends the lesson. Please join in reciting Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, found on page 622 of the Book of Common Prayer. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me, for you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Shalisa and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. They said secretly, then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, this man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, are these things so? Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as our ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not prosecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that receive the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their cloths at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Here ends the reading.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is really a shame in many ways that the Feast of St. Stephen gets lost in the shadow of Christmas, although it wasn't always thus. The Feast of St. Stephen on the Church's calendar is actually a more ancient feast than the Feast of Christmas, which, as we've talked about before, kind of meandered around as a holiday uh, for many centuries until it finally joined the, the church's calendar. The day of St. Stephen is older. The reason it's a shame is that St. Stephen is a unique saint and one whose life and death is very rich in meaning, meaning among the martyrs of the church in so many ways. For one thing, we simply have so much information in Scripture about Stephen. Almost two entire chapters in the Acts of the Apostles are dedicated to the naming of Stephen to his ministry, the persecution of Stephen, and his martyrdom. More, more information in the Bible about a saint than virtually any other, save for perhaps Peter and Paul. In addition, Stephen, we're told, is a Hellenic Jew, a Jew who either came from a more Greek part of the empire or was of a different sect, if you will, in Judaism that more adhered to the Greco-Roman ways of life and didn't keep so much separate from the Romans and their ways. Stephen is, therefore, a witness to the wide net that, that Christ came to cast in this world. Stephen is also a forerunner of today's deacons. In a part of the, of the Acts of the Apostles we didn't hear today, he's appointed, along with six others, appointed by the apostles, to serve the poor and the widowed, for this was an incredibly important part of the ministry of the very earliest church at Jerusalem in the several years that after Jesus was crucified. And in fact, the tradition calls Stephen an archdeacon because he is appointed more or less first among the deacons, both chronologically and in terms of his authority. And for those who are interested in, in things liturgical, he is made a deacon, although Luke doesn't use the word in, in, the, in the Acts, he's made a deacon by the laying on of hands. 
a sacramental act we still follow today in the ordination of deacons, priests, and bishops. Most significantly about Stephen, however, is that in addition to his gift of serving, his charism of service, there are many, many other parallels in his life to that of Jesus. Luke says not once, but twice, how filled with grace and the Spirit Stephen is. Like Jesus, Stephen is steeped in Judaism, but he also longs to give birth to its new era, to its new age in Christ. He actually tells, in chapter 7 of Acts, he tells the entire history of the Jewish people. He knows it by heart from Abraham to Solomon. But he also takes if issues with the Jews who are sitting in judgment over him, fellow Jews that are sitting in judgment over him, telling them that they are a stiff-necked people because they are not open to the new truth that is being revealed to them. Like Jesus, he comes to be castigated by the prevailing religious powers of the day in Jerusalem he is taken in for a trial on trumped-up charges of heresy. He pushes back against the tribunal. The crowd's hatred of Stephen grows, and they call for him to be put to death. His death, somewhat less, somewhat less than Jesus, is not an official act of the state, but is more or less a lynching at the hands of his fellow religious. But as he's being stoned, Stephen doesn't resist or fight back. And much like Jesus on the cross, he asks God to forgive those who are persecuting him. And finally, in this arc of Stephen slash Jesus, one of the consequences, one of the most important consequences of Stephen's martyrdom is the apostles become so afraid of the mob mentality that is overtaking Judaism in Jerusalem that they actually flee the city. Some, if not many, to the Antioch in present-day Syria, which soon becomes one of the four major hubs of earliest Christianity, along with Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Rome. In this season of nativity, of birth. It's hard not to see St. Stephen's witness largely as a series of births. The first deacon, the first martyr. Stephen unwittingly and unknowingly begins many of the traditions of the church. But what really speaks to me about Stephen is the passion with which he approaches his work and even his death. He has taken Jesus to heart. He has allowed himself to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he takes up a much less than glamorous ministry so that the apostles, the ones appointed directly by Jesus, can do the work that he has bid them to do. And finally, Stephen is not just willing to die for his faith, but also to vehemently defend it, apologize for it, and even model Christ in his own dying for it. How fitting it is then that in this season, while we celebrate Jesus taking upon himself human form, the very first saint we encounter is one who takes Jesus' form upon himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Prayers of the People, Form 3, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may be truly and humbly served you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including Georgia and Katie Armstrong, Liz Richards, Emily McQueen, Tim Brown, Betty Beatty, the Santiago family, Bob Flynn, Carol Matsky, Nina and her family, Katie Reed, Chris Papanti, Teresa, Pat and Dan Campbell, David, Sarah Walker, Jackson, and those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Tonight we pray Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, Saint Stephen, Saint Andrew our Apostle, and all our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the Church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people Let's pray together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Let us pray. Eternal God, 
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May God, who has prepared for you a city with eternal foundations, bring you with all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.